So Branch is looking to 3D print buildings, uh, and we're doing that through the combination of 3D printing technology and conventional construction materials to e enable a new method to build beyond conventional construction methods and materials. Um, and I'm, I'm an architect, and uh, so, and so, but why 3D printing? Uh, some of the things that uh, you would recognize the advantages in 3D printing, the complexity is free. You can do a cube, or you can, <coughs> sorry, uh, or you can do something, <clears throat> the complexity of something like this, and it's the same cost. Um, it's just based on the volumetric uh, area, or the volume of that object. Uh, customization is free, uh, and it's a direct digital fabrication process, rather than going through this uh, digital file to paper document to physical thing, it's the direct translation. Uh, and then because it's an additive versus a reductive process, uh, it's uh, it incredibly efficient. Um, so beginning to scale that to the building size, uh, it can have large repercussions. Uh, so the people pursuing this right now, uh, there's several different groups that are pursuing this. Uh, D-Shape in Italy, uh, they use a big powder bed uh, printer that they fill up with powder, uh, put resin on that. Um, uh, the Commer Maker in Amsterdam is like a scaled up maker bot. Um, and they print bricks that they kind of Lego together to make a building. I think it'll take them three years uh, to do one building. Uh, and then contour crafting uh, is a pursuit uh, through the University of Southern California. And it's 3D printing concrete uh, in layers. And so all of those have some commonalities. Uh, each of them uh, is building it up layer by layer, slowly over time, using uh, one material, uh, whether it be plastic, uh, sandstone, or concrete. And then they have to build something larger than the piece that they're constructing. So they've got to make a huge uh, construct in order to, com to make a building. Uh, so those are some of the uh, commonalities uh, between those. And then, uh, well, there's another pursuit uh, at Oak Ridge National Labs uh, that was revealed uh, yesterday and the day before. And so this is when we visited there a couple, uh, uh, about this time last year. This is me geeking out in that car. Uh, it was the first 3D printed car. Um, and so, and then this is the second one. Uh, that was done, I think, in February, and Obama and Biden uh, came down for the reveal on that. Um, so a little bit different. Uh, and then this is something that they just uh, debuted yesterday, or day before yesterday, uh, in Oak Ridge, and it was the 3D-printed structure collaborating with SOM, um, and it's using that same machine that built those cars, and it's a kind of, <coughs> sorry, it's kind of like a trailer, um, and it has, it's still using that layer by layer build up uh, process. Uh, so what we're doing is a bit different. Uh, we're calling it cellular fabrication. Um, and it, so this is transition into what, the, what we're doing. And so fundamentally we've been uh, building, uh, constructing buildings in the same method for 10,000 years. Uh, this post and beam method. Uh, and there's some deviation from that, but not a lot. Uh, where you harvest the material uh, or you cut it out of a, you, you cut square boards out of a round tree uh, or you slice uh, pieces of marble uh, out of a, a mountain. Uh, then you take those to a job site, you customize them on site, uh, cut them down to the size that they need to be for that custom building, and then you throw away the rest. Um, and that post and beam mindset is pretty much everywhere you look, whether it is this building or the apartment complexes. And if you think about a house constructed 100 years ago and one constructed today, it's virtually the same. And in what other, what other realm of technology would we accept no movement forward in 100 years? Um, there's some building science that's accelerated, but uh, really it's, it's not moved uh, greatly forward. Uh, so in construction, uh, the construction industry creates 36% of all waste uh, comes from construction sites. Uh, and it's 20% less productive than it was 25 years ago. Yet it's the most valuable product that uh, the majority of people or companies will ever buy. And so you, you'd think that we wouldn't waste and create this huge industry that is uh, doing these bad things. Um, 
So what we're doing is looking to the natural model, and we're, the fundamental question that we're asking is, what if you could build like nature? And so you see things like this, their beauty and uh, wonder in the natural world, and you'd love to design buildings like this, and some of you do, uh, but those cost an enormous amount, most likely. Uh, and so we can design, we have tools to design in that, those methods, uh, but because of the cost, uh, most of those designs exist only in the computer and they very rarely get translated into the, uh, the real world. Uh, so what we've done uh, is combine uh, 3D printing uh, and then the as a matrix. Uh, so our method, uh, we create this scaffold um, on which traditional uh, construction materials are applied. And this is freeform 3D printing uh, where it solidifies in open space. Uh, we use a large industrial robot as our movement mechanism and then from any surface model or volumetric model of a wall uh, we can create both the geometry and the robotic code. And We're calling it cellular fabrication. Uh, so what we do with that uh, is we use that as a scaffold for normal construction materials. Uh, we start with spray foam uh, and then concrete and those are applied into that matrix. Um, <clears throat> and then finished materials such as gypsum on the interior uh, and stucco, brick, siding, metal, uh, whatever on the exterior uh, as the finished material. And the analogy is that of how structure is formed in the natural world. And in this, it's a cutaway of a femur. You see these little interbone fibers in the middle uh, are very sparse. But as the stresses increase up towards the hip socket, those fibers become more enmeshed to create strength where it's necessary, but where it's not, it's very material efficient. And so in natural systems, material use is at a, is at a premium. And so they try to, you try to minimize the material use. Um, but geome geometric complexity is free. Um, but the underlying mindset is that of cellular uh, construction and how in, in a natural, whether it is our bodies or a tree or our bones, uh, the bounds of that cell create some strength, but it's really the, the material filling those cells that provides the majority of the strength or function uh, for that assembly. So in our muscles, it's blood and water pressure. In our bones, it's calcification. In a tree, it's turgor pressure, which is water pressure again. Um, and so it's using an economical material um, inside a, a complex geometry. And with what we're doing, we're using economical uh, construction materials, but creating that complexity through 3D, freeform 3D printing um, to create something that's beyond the capabilities of conventional construction. So what we're manufacturing uh, is a product, and we, make, we panelize the exterior uh, of a building, and we construct uh, something that would be six to eight feet wide by 10 to 15 feet tall, um, and we ship those to a job site, and then on site, they're kind of like big Legos. They uh, fit together. Uh, and then you apply those uh, materials on site so that it becomes a composite assembly on site. Uh, and so what we're shipping is very lightweight. One or two people can actually pick up the panels and move them around. No cranes uh, have to be involved. Um, so it's prefabricated, mass customized uh, wall panels is what we're constructing. And so right now we're going through a process. We've got about a year uh, of testing to, for load bearing testing uh, to meet all the ASTM and ICC certification process. Um, but where we're starting to see uh, traction is through interior feature walls, uh, something uh, like this, or uh, ceilings uh, such as what you see above. Uh, and so that's where we're beginning to uh, have customers. And so we, it's, it's really exciting to be here uh, because we've been in stealth mode for all, over two years. Uh, we just debuted the business uh, six weeks ago. Uh, and so it's, it's exciting to be talking to uh, you all. Um, we give capabilities to architects and designers and then the people that we serve, the owners and developers. If, if if uh, someone sends us a CAD file, whether it be AutoCAD, Revit, uh, Rhino, uh, we can translate that into uh, these wall panels. And there's applications in this that are far outside of uh, the construction. So actually somebody this morning called and wanted us to do a car. 
uh, but we're, we're not, <laughs> that's not what we're doing. But uh, when we, we met with Oak Ridge National Labs, one of the first things that they said was, oh, you could do a car, uh, or you could do uh, wings with this. So we were like, well, okay. Uh, so we made uh, this wing. It uh, spanned four feet. It weighs 10 ounces. Uh, and then they wrapped that with carbon fiber to be a, a very lightweight airfoil uh, assembly. Uh, and then because geometry was no big deal, we were like, well, let's, let's look at a dragonfly wing. And so we uh, made a dragonfly wing uh, through this. And a structural folded plane is an elegant structure uh, if you analyze it. Um, but this is uh, one of the mock-up walls that we've created showing the, the concrete spray foam, interior gypsum, exterior, it's a stucco product on that. And so this is uh, what the end result uh, would uh, look like. Uh, and then our shop uh, in Chattanooga, uh, we have a 12 and a half foot robotic arm on a 33 foot track. Um, and so it could essentially build something that would be 25 feet wide by 58 feet long. Um, but that's not, you, you would really never do that, just it'd be so ungainly. Um, so this is a, one of the walls that we did, it's about seven feet tall. Um, and then once you start applying material finishes to that, uh, it could, and, and this is uh, using just gypsum, uh, uh, drywall mud, uh, and then finishing that, uh, you can get something that has a, a wonderful aesthetic. And so this was our first product, uh, a project that we installed uh, Monday of last week. Uh, we worked with Keith Caseman. Uh, he used to have a practice here and teach at Columbia, I think. Um, and he's the designer of the 9-11 memorial for the Pentagon. And so this is 18 feet tall. Uh, we uh, built it in our shop and then assembled it in an afternoon. Uh, and so we're really excited about that. It's an exhibit that will go through the end of the year on 3D printing in Atlanta. And so by bringing automation into the construction industry uh, for really one of the first times, uh, it, there's a lot of um, advantages. And so it's, uh, the cost really is one of the best things is it, because it allows cost-effective design freedom. Um, and prefabrication, uh, general contractors are trying to reduce on-site time and reduce the number of things, unpredictability on-site. So this is uh, helping that. Uh, the robotic precision, 0 0.06 millimeters of accuracy, and so it's got accuracy in spades. Um, and putting a robot at risk rather than a person uh, on a site. Uh, so one of the things that we're doing is we're sponsoring a design competition for uh, the first 3D printed house, a uh, full scale house, uh, using our technology. Uh, and we're, that will go live in January. I would invite every single one of you to participate in that. Uh, we'll give a $10,000 prize, uh, and then we'll construct that in Chattanooga uh, in 2016. And we're forming partnerships right now with industry, with uh, the national labs, uh, and to be able to make all that happen. Um, uh, one other thing that has been happen, happening uh, in the past six weeks, we've been approached by a number of entities uh, that have, these are owners, uh, like building owners that say, we would love to have something in our building that is this. Um, and so we're actually too busy to design. Uh, so I, I, one of the things, uh, we partnered with Keith Caseman uh, on that project because we, I don't have time to design uh, the things that we, we can do with this. So we're partnering with designers uh, and so if you're interested in uh, working on some of these commissions that people are asking us to do, please uh, let me know. We'd be glad because you guys know the parametric possibilities uh, of what this uh, enables and most, there's a lot of architects out there that don't have the, that skill set. And so we're looking for those designers that have that skill set. Uh, so please, uh, we'd be glad to partner together on some of those things. And uh, because we are a, a startup, we're in kind of that growth mode. And so we're recruiting uh, people. And so uh, the algorithmic architects, uh, if, if you guys have that skill set, uh, Grasshopper, uh, we are definitely uh, in recruit mode. And so this is who we are right now. I was an architect for 15 years in private practice, uh, was a partner at a firm, and left that about a year and a half ago to begin doing this. 
Um, my co-founder was in school at University of Virginia. He, he stepped out of that. He was my next door neighbor for 11 years. Um, and then we've got mechanical engineer and roboticist, uh, material scientist, PhD from Berkeley, uh, MBA from London School of Business, uh, and then uh, computer science uh, at the, a guy that uh, was at the National Center for Computational Engineering doing optimization of tetrahedral grids. Uh, so it, anyways, it's a good team. Uh, so we are welcoming uh, uh, good, talented, humble, being able to collaborate intensely on, on several different fronts. And because it's a startup, uh, there's growth potential there uh, that's beyond uh, the architectural practice of what we all get paid, <laughs> or did get paid. Uh, but we're in the low mode right now, so don't expect that. <laughs> uh, so uh, right now, uh, on performance, uh, one of the things that we've done is uh, we've just with the plastic, we did a brick type assembly. It weighed about a pound and a half, and it supported 1,500 pounds in compression. Uh, once that's filled with those components that are concrete, spray foam, uh, it takes on the characteristics of those uh, materials. So it tested to 3,000 PSI, um, characteristic to concrete. Uh, the exciting one is the one that was just uh, the, the matrix and spray foam. Uh, it weighed two and a half pounds, and it supported 2,890 pounds uh, in compression, uh, which is stronger than wood stud construction for that same area. So that's, and the cost for something like that is very, very low. Uh, so that's really exciting. Uh, we've generated, beginning our first sales uh, in the past uh, six weeks, we're now up to, uh, we had six projects uh, before, and now we're up to, I think, 32 projects as of uh, this morning. Um, we've received a National Science Foundation grant um, and partnered with several different industry partners uh, to enable this. And so we're, we didn't intend this to happen, but it ends up being the case is that robot is pretty big and it is the largest freeform 3D printer in the world. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. And we're, we're raising VC money, so you have to have all these little taglines and stuff like that to say things like that. Um, but the exciting thing for me as an architect uh, is what this enables, is because this can open up uh, really the possibilities of design that have never before been accessible. Um, it's looking at how the flexibility of design that you see in the natural world and the beauty and wonder out there and being able to begin to translate that into how we create buildings. And so that's incredibly exciting. Um, the conservation that occur can occur on that, and like here is a beam that's actually optimized for the stresses involved. And so it's something that's shaped and it can conserve energy and materials. Um, and then the, the one that's very exciting is uh, most of the designs that would be in that, uh, the parametric design uh, realm that you guys, some of you might do, is 800 to $1,000 a square foot. Um, this brings that cost of that flexibility down into the normal, more normal commercial construction projects uh, that are in the $200 a square foot uh, construction cost range. And so it's democratizing that design, creativity, and flexibility down to what I used to practice uh, in uh, with commercial construction institutional type uh, projects. And so that's very exciting. So anyways, that's uh, what we're doing. Uh, and so if you guys have anything in mind, I would love to talk with you. Um, if you're any investors in the audience, we're also raising money. So please do get in touch. Uh, so anyways, thank you.